Good morning, good morning, good morning, Baltimore and all over the country. The question is for today. Today is 5.08. It's in the morning. And I believe, I believe it is Monday. But I don't know the day's date. So I believe it's the 5th, the 5th of May. It, it could be the... Um, yeah, I think it's May the 5th. I'm not certain, folks. So, if I'm not certain, let me know. What's going on, Blackstone? I haven't seen you in such a long time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So, it's early in the morning. And I came at you live. I came at you first. Before you turn your news on. No news as of yet. Only thing... The news for me and you is, I'm still working on this van. I'm not going to let nobody off the hook. <clears throat> I'm not going to let nobody off the hook. Um, I had a conversation with someone uh, inbox me not too long ago, text me, right? And um, they want to sell me a van, a used van, uh, 1970 or 1960 something like that but I'm not interested in a 1960 1970 a 1980 or 1990 I'm interested in a 2020 $45,000 that's what I put out there that's what I'm gonna get I know I have more than 45 people that I didn't help in the past or if I didn't help you uh it's okay if you choose or wish to help or if you see uh, a need and to invest in what I like to do, you know, uh, jump in the race. It's this, this race for everybody is open for you. It's open for the people. But it's a lot of new people who just getting on my page, right? And... Um, they haven't worked with me in the past or haven't been around in the past. People just jumped on and and the folks, the new folks, trust and believe, they the one helping me out the most. It's some people who saw my work in the past and it helped me out. So I appreciate both ends. But the folks, the new folks that just just jumping on and knowing me and saying that why don't I get a, a used van? For what? Why should I get a new van and 45 people a thousand dollars that the folks that uh, I know have it it's not a problem. Trust and believe folks if this message get to you and you don't have it don't reply just say you don't have it just tell me no it's okay it's okay you don't have to make excuses for everybody else only make excuses for yourself if you don't have something it's not for you this is not for you if you don't have it why do something that you don't have why invest that you don't have. If you don't have it, don't make excuse. I'm not trying to hear no negative stuff from you. You know, you're gonna say um, people don't have this. You know, don't talk about what people don't have. Just say what you don't have. And it's just you don't even have to explain yourself to me. Just say no. <laughs> That's it. You know, don't don't make excuses for other people. Just tell me no. So. To say this, to say that, you know, I know too many people for me not to get 45000 to get a van to help the community with. It's all. I'm going to keep on keeping on until I get it. You know, 45000 <clears throat> excuse me, is a lot of money for one person, of course. But then again, you never know who have what. 
You only know what you have and what you can do. So this is not for you out there if you don't if you don't see any need and by helping uh, with the van, it's okay. I still love you. I still like you. I still I'm still cool with you. You know, it's just that it's not for you at this time. But trust and believe, folks. You be surprised who would love to help me if they see this message. You know, people might not see any message. People might not know that I'd like to get a van, a six, a 15 passenger van. You know, I got the radio advertisement for 10 months. I'm giving 10 months free advertisement for the, for the person who support this cause. If you don't need advertisement and if you want to support me, that's cool too. So people out here who want to help, trust and believe. It just might not, you might not want to help, but it's, and you might do want to help. So once again, I have a plan. I want this 15 passing van and it's $45,000. So any, any 45 people want to support $1,000, we can make it happen. That's, that's it. It's not a whole lot. A whole lot of math. It's forty-five thousand, forty-five uh, thousand dollars it costs. Forty-five thousand three hundred and some odd dollars, but in court, I'm sure we're not going to worry about the three hundred some odd dollars. But you understand where I'm coming from, right? You understand where I'm coming from. It's not that much of a difference. It's not a whole lot of math. It's forty-five people. $45,000, $1,000 a piece. And, you know, where my Warren Brown's at? Where my Jay Wendell Gordon at? I'm naming law firms first, and then I'm going to name the rest. Where my um, councilman people, uh, Councilman Leon Pickett, you know, uh, there's a lot of council people who might want to help, and, and some might not want to help. But, I have someone emailing every councilman person. Uh, she already started emailing yesterday. She emailed 25 people, and I need her to give her a list. Of, email everybody. Email all the councilmen. Email all the people who are running for council office. Email the people who are running for mayor. You know, email everybody. That way... Excuse me. That way we can, um, if the people don't see this message that I'm trying to do, uh, they'll get the email. That's all. It's not, it's, it's okay. Life still going to go on with me. It's just that I'm asking for a 15 passenger van. I already went to the dealership. I already got the paperwork. I already showed y'all the price and Y'all see the van. You see what I do in the community. And um, it's, it's time to shine. It's time for you out there to say, hey, I have $1,000. Let me support this brother. This brother always giving us news updates. This brother always see people on the ground. He kick them, make sure he, they are alive. This brother always feeding the uh, least of those, you know, this, this person is this person. So some people like what I do. Some people dislike what I do. So some people might support, some people might not. So it's all about, I know it can happen. I know it. It's 45 people, 45 people, not a lot to me. 45 people may be a lot to others, but 45 people, you know, I want to at least ask, I want to at least ask 500 people. Out of 500 people, I believe I can get $4,500,000. I believe I can get $1,000 out of 500 people. Come on now. So, 
I know I'm gonna have a lot of haters. Trust and believe. You know, a lot of people who, who think it's impossible. But if you know who I am and know what I've done and know what I'm doing, you might consider it. So let me let me let y'all know how I, I got with Radio One. I'm not an employee for Radio One, but let me give y'all a little taste of the medicine. Who am I and what I did to get where I'm at? Let me let me just put a little a twist on it. Well, you know I've been in transportation for many, many years, right? Let me tell you how I got with the radio station and how I feel comfortable in uh, as far as you know who I am and, and, and the swag that I do. And th yes, I am a celebrity cab driver. And the reason why I call myself I call myself, I gave myself that name, Larry the Celebrity Cat Driver. So I, I got a text earlier and the person said, if you're a celebrity, you shouldn't have no problem getting the van. Okay. That, it, it was a hater move. A, a person that may, you think may be in your corner, the people going to throw stones at you. You follow me? So... You're going to get some stones thrown at you because you're trying to get get what you're trying to get. You're going to get some stones thrown at you, folks. They're going to come from to the left, to the right, to the north, to the east. But let me let me um, keep, keep focus. Um, how I started with the radio station, how I got in, well, man, everybody is not, like, equipped or got the same swag that others right so when i became a cab driver i just didn't want to be a regular cab driver i called myself larry the celebrity cab driver larry the celebrity cab driver and what do a celebrity cab driver saying that i'm different i'm different you can be different in what you do if i was a trash if i worked a trash truck I would call myself Larry the Trash Man or the Celebrity Trash Man. You got to be different, right? So I said, I'm Larry the Celebrity Care Driver. And people don't know what that means. All these educated people who went to school, who got bachelor's degrees, who this, that, they don't know what Larry the Celebrity Care Driver is. If I ask you right now, folks, I'm asking the doctor, the doctor and to, uh, tell me before I give the answer. Hold on. Let me give the answer. I'm not going to get an answer, but who know what Larry the Celebrity Cab Driver is? You tell me the answer, I will send you one dollar. Because a lot of people like sending me one dollar, right? <laughs> one dollar is. It's, it's, it's good. I'm not going to cry, but I'm going to send you $1. I probably won't even get the answer because the kid is $1. But you tell me what do Larry the Celebrity Care Driver mean? You know? So, well, people went to school. They they went, they got their master. They got their this. They, they own companies. They this, that, and forth. But a lot of people can't even tell me. What what is Larry the Celebrity Care Driver? What do that mean? Not to put nobody out there, but I'm just saying, what is Larry the Celebrity Care Driver? Larry, just this this thing, just get you say Larry the Celebrity Care Driver. Tell me what it is. I'll give you about five minutes to think about it. I know it's puzzling to your head. What is Larry the Celebrity Care Driver? What do Larry the Celebrity Care Driver mean? You know, but I I give you I tell you, Larry the celebrity cab driver. Larry, that's me, the celebrity cab driver. That means you are the celebrity, not me. You are the celebrity. I'm just the cab driver. So look, Larry, that's me, the celebrity cab driver. That means if you're getting in my cab, you are the celebrity. So. A lot of people think that I'm 
I'm the celebrity. No, you are the celebrity. I'm the cab driver. See, y'all didn't know that, did you? So, all my people is the celebrity cab driver. I'm the celebrity cab driver. You the celebrity. I'm the celebrity cab driver. That means everybody getting in my cab is a celebrity. You see, I give people credit before I give myself credit. But people look at me, hey, I'm the celebrity. Okay, I'm a celebrity. So I had got a text saying, well, if you're a celebrity, you can get your own cab or your own stuff, you know. But that's okay. You know, you, you keep your, your haters keep you motivated. Even though the people who you think in your corner, <laughs> uh, your haters keep you motivated. So by I have haters out there, they're going to keep me motivated and they're going to, and I'm going to get that van and I'm going to, I'm not going to brag about it. It's just that I'm going to get it. And, you know, see things happen for a reason in this world, right? Just like Uber and Lyft came out. All these cab owners, these cab companies used to treat us like crap. You know, they used to like treat us like shit. Cab companies. But when Uber and Lyft came out, I said, yeah, good enough for them. All the cab companies used to treat the drivers like crazy. Like, one day I was $25 short. The owner of the cab company took my keys from me. Took it. I had to pay, I think I was like, I just started driving there. I, I might have been there for like a month or two. And uh, I took the keys, took my car. Because I was $25 short. Some some days, not good as others. You know, being a cab driver is like the lottery. You hope that you get the money and then you pay them. And then after you pay them, and then you continue working and you pay yourself. But every day you have to pay the cab company. You pay them their money first. And, and then they got a time where you got to be in by 1 o'clock. You got to be in by 1. So you got to make your money early in the morning. And you might be like $5 short. But I was $25 short. I, you know how you try to get that one more customer? And then if you come in, if you come in after one, a late fee to hit you. I think it starts from Mike, I forgot about 20 bucks for the first minute. And then they keep on ticking until you get there. So the longer you stay out, the more money it ticking. You know, you'll get a late fee. Then you gotta pay late fee, you gotta pay the short and the late fee, see? And they know you out there trying to get that last fan, then sometimes they cut your board off so you can't get it. I was um, like $20 short from Jimmy's one time, but I I had, I was on my way to the, to the last job, you know, before I had to be in. And that job was coming from uh, Middle River to Morgan, so it, it would have paid like $30, $30, $40, you know, and only needed like 20 Don't you know they turned my board off before I got there? See, they can follow you on the GPS, <clears throat> and they turned my board off, you know, because I supposed to be going in there, but I needed that 20 to order to go in there, but that was a $40 job I was going to. It was a taxi access plus anything go over twenty. The people got to pay the the rent, so there still would have been forty bucks. So I went there. They turned my board off, so I wasn't able to get the taxi access part, but the the cash part the lady gave me. So I put the lady got in the car and I was driving, driving up where she was going. At. They called the lady and told her to get out the get out the cab. Man, the lady was late, late for uh, a test. So she uh, I kept on going. And then when I dropped off, I went to the company and paid them the company. Don't you know the company said that I had to pay the driver the money that I made for her? 
what? But they, they send another driver there. And you talk about, I would have to pay because I took the customer anyway. Some some bull crap like that they be doing to you. So I was so happy Uber and Lyft came out. Now, Jimmy's the lady who owned the company, who did that to me. She sold her company. She sold the company because she couldn't make it on drivers was leaving her going to Uber and Lyft. And, you know, so that's why they start selling medallions, um, going under, doing all this stuff. You know, it's illegal to sell medallions anyway. It, you're supposed to be auctioned off and giving to you. I mean, they were doing all kind of crazy stuff out here. So now this Corona stuff came out and all the business and stuff closed, right? So everybody think that um, by they hurting, some people are hurting and some not. But we all hurting together. You know, it's the millionaires and the trillionaires and billionaires. And we all in the same boat, right? But we ain't in a boat where a person might not have a thousand dollars. So, you know, I'm getting some negative vibes from the people who you think that not going to give them negative vibes. But it's cool. It's cool. It's all right. Because the people who really giving you me the negative vibe is the people who don't really know me. They, you know, but the people who I have a long-term relationship, the long people who know the work I've done for them, I might have been doing no work for you, but I did work for others. I didn't help other people. So kind of like, I'm hoping that it touch your heart from the people 10, 15 years ago that I didn't work with and help and sweat and did all this and was in the field back. I deserve $1,000 from the people way back. But the new beginning, I understand y'all going to criticize me. But the people who I've been there for yeah, I've been here for so y'all just meet me and don't know. All y'all know is dollar sign celebrity cab. Y'all don't know my history with the people that I didn't sweat for. Yes. So to be to say this to say that, um, I understand the newcomers who don't know me and I haven't did anything for you guys or I might have did, did something for the newcomers. And uh, I guess uh, some of the newcomers don't appreciate my talent. Sometimes you're, sometimes I be so cheap and do things like for nothing, and people take advantage of some of the folks. Some of the folks take advantage of some people at work. The the experience that I have and the talent that I have and the and nothing that I give my talent and my, my all to people is, you know. So let me explain to you what I'm trying to say. My talent and my status that I built up, and my work speaks for itself. My work speaks for itself. So if I come and interview you and talk to you, um, you get you getting a top dollar and if we will talk or just be with me. If I'm in present with you for X amount of hours and stuff, my time is, is valuable. It's valuable. My time for me to be with with you, because it's built up, my status built up. Just like for instance, um, if the mayor come around you, their time is worth a lot of um time. The the longer they be with you, the value, you know, like say for instance, Pete Diddy be with y'all. How long Pete Diddy gonna hang around with one individual? So if Pete Diddy hang around you, don't that's worth a lot. And you gonna feel real good, right? If Fantasia be with you for X amount of minutes, you're gonna be happy. If Fantasia be with you for one minute, that one minute is worth 
more than a regular person hang with you. But I, I guess y'all don't understand my thrift. Um, but to make a long story short, what I'm trying to say is, folks, when I do things for people, if people give me what they they give me, their, their heart going to text them later on and send me something else. And it's already been proven without me even saying anything about it. So, um, let this speak on, on you. Let's not speak for other people. So, when people text me and say that people don't have this to give me, let's not talk about the people. Let's just concentrate on you and talk about me, the individual, you as a whole. So if you don't have something to support it, it's okay. Just say no. You're not you're not interesting. Because I'm going to get a lot of no's before I get one yes. And if you're a company or business, you already know. People know. That's why you have to ask about 100 people for something. And out of 100 people, you're only going to get 10 people who are going to support and say yes. You follow me? So that's just the way it is. I mean, I've been a salesperson for seven up bowling company. I used to go into stores and give discounts. People like discounts. For instance, uh, it's $63 a case of sodas. Like it, like a 16 uh a 16-ounce um, bottle, soda bottle, right? The regular price for a case. It costs, uh, how much did it cost? Like $10 in, uh, you know, wholesale. We, you know, sell to stores. It costs ten thirty for a case of sodas. Cans, it costs, cans, a case of cans, soda we sell to the stores. It costs like $10 for a case of sodas, right? So, 16 ounce bottle that costs 10.30, it might be 10.60 a case, right? So, can you imagine a case of sodas is like $10? But if you buy a, a lot, the price drop down to 6.30 a case. You follow me? So, what we tell people, you buy 10 cases, you get five cases free. So, 10 cases for like $10 and something. 10 cases, how much that going to be? Uh, you follow me? So, you add up 10 cases. That's like 100 bucks, right? So, if you buy 15 cases for 630 that's, I'm going to do the math with y'all because I want, I want y'all to see what's, what's, that, what's going on. 6.30 a case. 15, let's do 15. So 15 cases, right? 15 cases for uh, 630 is $94.50. So $94.50, right? For 15 cases of sodas. Uh, the cases really cost like... Um, 10.30, I believe. 10.30. 15.
So, so it really costs one hundred and fifty-four dollars and fifty cents. So, it really costs one hundred and fifty-four dollars and fifty cents. So, if you're giving them for ninety-four dollars, you they'd be saving one fifty-four fifty and ninety-four. Zero, 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 fifteen. They really save us sixty dollars. So they save. So you. So you losing sixty dollars. But see, this is what you tell them. If you want to sell a lot, the name of the game is get, get a lot of sodas off your truck. So instead of you saying. 1030 a case. Say, I tell you what, if you buy 10 cases, I give you five free. Everybody gonna jump on that. They like to see free, but really, they're getting it for 630 a case anyway. It really, like, if you buy a lot, you're getting 630 a case. So, you tell them, you give them to them free. Say, hey man, you buy 10 cases, I give you five free. But the goal is already 6.30 a case. But if you buy one case, it's 10.30. So they like the free word. So basically, it's 6.30 anyway, but the retail is 10.30. But the wholesale is 6.30. So you gotta, you gotta see, let them know what you're getting. So I was a salesperson. For Seven Up Island Company, I used to be a salesman for Park Sarge's. More Park Sarge's, mine, please. So that's two salesman jobs, right? Also, was a school bus driver, drive school bus CDL license. You know, I had my CDL uh, soda truck license too. I drove an oil truck. I was a security guard. I was a maintenance man. I was a cook. Um. I worked in Las Vegas in the casinos, uh, you know. So I'm not a, like a little Joe off the streets, you know. I always wanted to be an actor. I always wanted to be in showbiz and all that, you know. So, but let's get back to the friends that I didn't help. I didn't help people when they was like in a dying bed, when they sick. That I used to have to dress them every morning, put their shoes on, put them in a wheelchair, take them to the to their job, get them out the wheelchair, roll them in a job, put them on a um, in in the in the studio, turn hit the buttons off, and then they say good morning. You know, I did all that. You know, then when they get off the radio. I go pick them up, put put them in the wheelchair, take them home, put them in the bed, take their shoes off. I mean, I didn't I didn't have to, my work didn't have to speak for itself, but I did all this stuff for six months, cause, cause, consistently. Every morning I get up four o'clock in the morning and go to this this brother's house and do all that. Yeah, I did. I did it. I've been knowing this brother for like uh, about 20 years. So, you know, so when I ask a person for a thousand dollars, and I might not be asking you, I might not did all this to you, but that's just one of my testimonies. So I'm going back to the person who has the thousand dollars. I ain't calling no names. So when I ask somebody, when when it's time for me to really ask to get this, I know I can get it. It just that that's just one of the testimonies. And then you want to hear some more. What, what the celebrity cab driver did. That's why I'm asking these people for $1,000. I, I, that's, that's only one person. I can name one. 
a hundred or two hundred people. Uh, it's not a tick for attack, but when it's time for me to ask, why can't I ask people for a thousand dollars? The people who are already sitting there in the tractors with the big money. So, and the people who I ask, they go, they got to go to where they ask other people for things too. The people who are already in the business, I know all they contact, who they need things from. If they need an attorney, they go to that attorney. If they need a loan, they go to that person for a loan. And then I, I know when people need help and people come to this person to ask this thing for this person to ask this thing. I've been in the, I've been, I, I've, I've been around. So it's an honor for somebody to have me in their presence as well as me in their presence. And vice versa, it's a two-way street. So, getting back to what I what I have to, I gotta stay focused, Larry. Stay focused. So, you know, if a person in it with me, you in it. If you're not, hey, you know who I interviewed on my talk show. <clears throat> uh, what's her name? What's her name? <clears throat> I can't remember. Oh, I gotta get her again on my show. Billy Jean. Billy Jean, not my lover. It's too early in the morning for me singing. Where's my water at? <clears throat> Let me drink me some water. This is about 5.44 in the morning. So, uh, let me tell you how I started with the radio. So, the radio station was down on St. Paul Street. Everybody know where the radio station was at. They moved out the Woodlawn. Right? But before they moved from downtown, I called them right before they moved. I used to call to the Big Fat Morning Show every, every, uh, what is it every morning? Or every Tuesday. Called it Tell the Truth Tuesday. And, um, Remember, I gave myself that name, Larry the Celebrity Cab Driver, right? So, I used to, when people used to catch my cab and uh, jump out and run, I used to tell the stories on Tell the Truth Tuesday. So, uh, one day, All right, it's left the kid driver. So one day, it was nice. I went downtown. I got some business cards made. I um, took it in this in the radio station. Gave my business cards to the station. And I told them, "Can you get it to Mark Clark?" So they gave it to Mark Clark. And one day, Mark Clark called me. And boy, I was so happy. I, they said, hey, 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 Larry, the slippery cab driver, can you take us to the uh, airport, BWI? I said, yeah, I'll be right there. Man, I went, I went and put on a suit and tie. I shined, I shined that car up inside and outside. Had some smell good. Man, that, that cab was like, man. It was so clean. Mm. I even got pictures of it, you know. So I picked them up, pulled up down the station, opened the door for them. They got in, took them to the airport. Then when they moved out Woodlawn, they moved, and then I picked them back up from the airport. You know, I was happy. That was my first, first celebrity, celebrity that I had in the car. I really thought I was somebody. Damn boy, I was like, you know. See, because people call me because Larry, that celebrity cab driver. It made me feel like a celebrity. Actually, remember before we started this, they the celebrities, I'm just a cab driver. So, so one day they moved out 
we're gone. And Mark Clark was saying, when we were downtown, we was getting newspapers. Newspapers, people, give us a call. 4104, no. 4104819292. Because they were 92Q, you know. So, anybody call. They said, when we were downtown, we'd get newspapers. So they wasn't getting the delivery for the newspaper. You know, every radio show need newspapers. So they can look through the newspapers to get the stories to talk about what's going on in the community. So I said, okay. So one day, right, well, the very next day, I went to 7-Eleven or was it Royal Farm? This was one of them. I got all the newspapers. I got the USA, the Afro, the Sun, the New York Times, the Washington Post. And I wrote on the top of the headline, Larry the Celebrity Care Job, right? Larry the Celebrity Care Job. I put a rubber band on it. It was like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And I put it on a step because I know the show come on at 6. So I put it on a door, right? Don't you know I turned the radio on uh, 6 o'clock in the morning when it came on? They said, yeah, let's give a shout out to Larry the Celebrity Care Driver. He bought us papers. Yeah, not one, not two, not three. So... I got a shout out and everybody heard, heard me on the radio. They said, Larry, we heard him talking about you on the radio. So I felt good. Everywhere I was going, everybody, they was talking about Larry, this celebrity cab driver, right? You know, free advertisement. So I did it again the next day. Yeah, Larry, celebrity cab driver, go to the So the third day, man, I tried to sneak the papers on his, on his stuffs, right? Cause they knew what time they was, you know, got there. Man, they bust out the door. Hey, man, what's up, man? Hey, man, they, man, they was happy, man. You know, they caught me. You ever got caught trying to sneak something somewhere? They said, man, we got to pay you for this and all that. So they 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 wanted to give me a list of the the papers they need because I was getting them all the papers. I was getting the Afro, the USA, the this that the four right. And uh, then Larry Young, he met me. He said, hey, man, how you doing? That's when I first met Larry Young. He said, hey, hey, can you bring us papers too? You know, because, um, you know, Larry Young, he, he, I think he was getting the, the Sun, the Afro, and the USA, I think. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so, so they gave me an order what to bring them. Don't y'all know I was bringing on papers every morning for like two years? Mm -hmm. Y'all don't know that, do y'all? Mm -hmm. And they was they was paying me every week. You know, they um, sent a check to my house every week. But to make a long story short, so every morning I was coming, then they would start letting me in, buzzing me in. And I was part of the team, even though I wasn't like working there. I had, I was sitting in in ninety two Q and going around. Then they start and then one day I was getting some coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. You know how every morning I get my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. So I saw Mark Clark in the line. He said, Hey man, what's up, celebrity? So he was in line. It was a long ass line. So he was in line. And he, I see him kept looking at his pocket. Then he ran out. Because he had to get on the air. So I went and got his coffee. He didn't know I was going to bring it. He didn't even know I was going to get it. So I got him a large coffee, cream and sugar. Went over there and took it to him. He said, oh, man, thank you, man, thank you. And then every morning, Larry Young, I, I used to... Um, Marva, well, it was Marva, Troy Johnson, and Mark Clark, the Big Fat Morning. That was the original one, right? I would just get all three of them stuff every morning. Then Larry Young wanted me to get his stuff every morning. And then uh, I was getting, who else? Um, uh, what's his name? Tim Watts, I was getting his stuff every morning. 
Rob Bates, the um, news guy, getting this stuff. So I, I would make my rounds and write everybody order down. And then I, I used to drive to Paneer Bread for uh, Mark Clark and them. Then uh, Dunkin' Donuts. I used to go to Paneer Bread, McDonald's, and um, Dunkin' Donuts. I used to make my rounds for everybody. Then I, they buzz me in. I get this person that, this person that, these person this, that person that. First, I bring the newspapers. Then I go make my rounds, right? And, you know, they used to give me the change, give me money. I used to make some money, right? Doing that. That was my hustle, right? Then, and listen to this. I don't even really say guys or fellas or supporters. So, y'all know that radio personality, a lot of us, we don't have time to wash our cars, right? So, I started washing their cars. You know, because Mark Clark called me dirty. And then, that's when Sanjay came. Because they got rid of Marvel and they hired Sanjay. And I used to wash Sanjay's car. I used to have a crush on Sanjay, too. I used to wash her car. I used to... Mm, man, I put a hurt on. When you got a crush on somebody, you put a hurt on their car, right? <laughs> man, that car was so shiny when I got done. You can see yourself in the in the mirror. It's like, man. So she parked her car in front. I washed and shined that car, man. And you know, everybody when they go in the studio, they say, man, look at that car, right? So Mark Clark said, hey man, can you wash my car? And, and then uh, Troy Johnson. Then it got rid of Troy Johnson and got pork chop. Remember? So it was uh, Mark Clark, pork chop, and Sanjay. I just watched that car. Then Larry Young had me watch this car. Remember, I bring the newspaper every day. I go get the breakfast every day. And now I be washing their cars every day. And then the manager stuff, uh, Howard Mazers and and everybody, salesperson, hey man, can you wash my car too? So I wash their car on that side, I go around the other side, wash their car. So all day, from the morning, it's like six in the morning till probably six at night, I'm at the radio station. I did this for like two, three years, every morning. I ain't never had time to, to work. I work at, I finished with them, but I was starstruck, you know. Uh, Pete Diddy and them come in there and Fantasia and Lil Bow Wow and you know, I used to I used to wash cars in a suit, dressed up washing cars. But I never know who would come in through the radio station. So that's where I got all the pictures at and all that good stuff. And then um they used to send me to the store and get them something, and I'd go to the store and get them something, you know, go in the store for the celebrities, the big wheelers. J. Andy Brown, I had to ride him around. Then they sent me to go pick up Richard Roundtree because his limousine didn't show up and they had to bring Richard Roundtree on the show. They said, Dad, he said he's like a celebrity. Can you go pick up Richard Roundtree? So I went downtown, picked Richard Roundtree up. He um had a big cigar. And he was putting it out. I said, no, man, you can smoke. You rich around to you. You chef. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, man, I can tell y'all more and more and more. But y'all don't know my sweat. What I did. One day, Kathy Hughes was out. The, the founder. You know, Kathy Hughes, TV One, Radio One. Yeah. She was out. Out Towson one day at a. You know, one of the fads they be having out there. So, I had my tuck on that day, right? So, one of the the, the sales rep or one of the big wheels asked me, he said, Celebi, I need you to um, be Dr. Kathy's bodyguard for a little while. You know, walk behind and all that. So, they chose me. I was one of the chosen ones. So, I was Dr. Kathy's bodyguard. Yeah, I recorded myself doing it because y'all ain't going to believe me. So when I asked people for $1,000, I 
I didn't pour sweat and volunteer stuff. So when somebody texts me this morning and say, we don't have this, I'm asking the big wheelers who millionaires for a thousand dollars. So I feel that all the stuff that I didn't did, you know, that y'all don't know nothing about. I thought it's feasible enough. This is my time to get a thousand dollars from people who I'm asking. So I'm having emails sent to people because I've been asking on this broadcast for a thousand dollars. Anybody see my vision? Anybody want to invest in me? So I didn't put a lot of sweat with celebrities, real celebrities, people, real owners of business, TV One and Radio One, and I didn't did all that for people. So me asking for a thousand dollars, it shouldn't be no problem. So I'm gonna ask a hundred people for a thousand dollars, and hopefully I will get forty five thousand dollars. Out so I can get that man. So when a person get on get on my thing and say, uh, why don't you get a used car, used van, 1970 or 1960? Oh, I want a 2020. I deserve the best. Oh, but I didn't put in that sweat. I didn't put people's shoes on, put they pull their pants up, tie their shirt, put them in a wheelchair, took them to church, took them to work, picked them back up. Bought newspapers, went got the food, washed the cars. Huh? I can't ask for a thousand dollars? Come on now. So my work should speak for itself. And that's just the the radio stuff. I ain't get to the politicians yet. So let me tell you about the politicians. Yes. Yeah, you know, before people became before people became the state's attorney, Marilyn Mosby, before she was became that. I mean, she didn't ask me to do it, but I did it anyway. I interviewed people. I interviewed uh, the state's attorney, Marilyn Mosby. Yeah, because I, I like her. I like everybody, so I interviewed everybody. So even though people might think I'm an amateur or whatever, but I went to the best of the best. Yes. So let me run it down with the politicians now, folks. So just in case you might think that, hey, should y'all just meet me and y'all don't know what I did before. So now's my time to shine and I'm going to shine. This is my platform now and I'm going to let you know what I did for the politicians. So by me asking for a thousand dollars, Shouldn't be no issue. So when I get these texts and saying people don't have no money, I'm asking the people with the money that I know got the money. Yeah, I know you got the money too, but that's another story. Sometimes people who have it and don't want to support, that means they don't want support anyway. But a lot of times people are not going to want you to shine over them, but I'm not trying to do a tick for a tag or shine over a person. I'm just being me. I already put him in the sweat. Remember? I took y'all way back. So if y'all missed what I said, you can always listen to the beginning of this broadcast. So let me get to the politicians. So one day, I was in Madame Mall. And way before um, State's Attorney Marilyn Mosley was elected. And um, it was me and 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 WCP, Tessa, Tessa Hill. We was down here, and we take pictures and I interviewed, you know, I interviewed Marilyn Mosley, state's attorney. She's nice. She's smooth. I did a lot of time. I interviewed her a lot of time. By the way, I interviewed Marilyn Mosley when she first ran. She won. Then I interviewed her again when she was reelected. Went on the polls, interviewed her, showed her signs, this, that, and other. She won. 
So you never know if I had influence of the people who be watching my videos and say, oh, okay, she said this, she said this, okay. So you never know when I interview people or when I talk to people, it may have been that they might needed that 50 more thousand views that I be having. Or maybe they might need that one more view that voted for you. So, you know, we know. So when it's, when it's my time to ask for a, a donation or can you support the cause, what I'm doing? I'm not selling no drugs. I'm not robbing or killing nobody. I'm just doing a little old community service. I'm helping the unfortunate ones who met it humanity. I'm helping, I'm feeding the poor, feeding the less unfortunate ones, I'm feeding the good people, I'm feeding the rich. So remember, I went to the store for the rich people, the celebrities, watch cars and bring newspapers and this and interview people and so I'm not just helping the poor, I'm helping the rich too. So I play both ends. So the people who are saying that I'm a celebrity, I should have it. I'm the celebrity cab driver. You are the celebrity. See, I always put people first. Yeah. I take, I just look like, I just throw this raggedy hat on him and I look like a celebrity, but hey, you the real celebrity. So, so the politician, okay. Yes, I interviewed State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby. She's smooth. I keep the camera on her. I might have had influence with people voted for for my views. So I'm going to ask her for a donation, a small token, and you never know. You ask, you should receive. You seek, you should find. You knock, the door will open. If you have not, you ask not. And I'm asking. So when people say, oh, $45,000, can you um, do this? Do you? Can you do that? Come on, folks. Oh, somebody want to know my cash app? So dollar sign celebrity cash. Y'all already know. But I'm going to do it again. This is my cash app. If somebody want to support you can. If you don't have it, that's cool too. I'm not going to be mad at you. So, let me get to my politicians. So, politicians um, like uh, Ivan Bates. So, I just didn't leave Ivan Bates out. I interviewed um, Marilyn Mosby. I interviewed Ivan Bates. I gave them the same um, time and the same energy and the same likeness because I don't have this <clears throat> favoritism. I treat everybody the same. Everybody. And I'm going to give you a prime example what what kicked off one day. Well, I, I interviewed Ivan Bates and I interviewed Marilyn Mosby the same way. Hey, I'm, I'm like... I'm, I'm, I get along with everybody. I don't have no favoritism, you know. So, so one day, right, I interviewed um, what's her name? What's her name? Barbara Robinson, Senator Barbara Robinson, right? I interviewed her. Interviewed her. This was out the last election. I interviewed Senator Barbara Robinson, right? And uh, we went to Annapolis and. She tried to put, she put a bill in for us one time for the homeless people and all that. We were walking around the, the, uh, the, I would get ready to say the White House. Me and Christine Flowers walking around the Senator, the delicate building, and this, that. She walked through the tunnel under the ground and all that. You know, they got a tunnel in, uh, at the Senator office. We did this. They told her how to do this and how to get the votes and all that. So, um, I don't think that bill passed, but we she put one in for it. So anyway, we interviewed her. We I interviewed uh, Senator Antonio Haynes. So 
I interviewed her. I interviewed Antonia Haynes. And, it's, and I recorded it all online. Both of them running. Uh, he was running against her. And he won the election. But uh, I interviewed both of them. I'm not going to just interview one and not the other. I interviewed everybody. So all the politicians who ran for office in these elections, y'all know who I am. I'm asking all y'all who I put that camera in front of them for a thousand dollars donation or a thousand dollar investment or a thousand dollar donation or a thousand dollar investment. I said it twice so y'all can understand where I'm coming from. You can invest in me or you can donate to me. So who is a politician on here? Who on here that I have not interviewed if you're running for office? It ain't nobody running candidate that I have not interviewed. And you tell me who I didn't interview. I didn't read anybody. Judge Heard. You know, Judge Heard interviewed her when she was running for the, uh, the judge. Interviewed uh, the lawyer, Lauren Garrett, the chief judge. Had him on the talk show. Didn't charge him a dime on a radio show. I had Jay Wendell Gordon on the talk show. Didn't charge him a dime to be coming on the talk show. I even went to the courthouse for two weeks, stayed in the courthouse, and listened to Warren Brown and J. Wendell Gordon when they were handling that case. And it, each day I came out and talked about it, interviewed them, didn't charge him a dime. You know, I put a lot of mics in people's face. You know, so when I ask for something that I would like to have so I can support the community swift and better, I don't see no problem for me asking for a thousand dollars from the people who I put that mic in their mouth, in their face, not, you know, in their face or in their mic. It's nicely. I'm not like demanding nothing, but. It's my time to help, ask, you know. So that's all I'm trying to say. You know, when when I when I ask people for help, the ones that I already help. So we going back. I'm throwing a tick for a tag because I gotta do it. If I don't do a tick for a tag, you never gonna you gonna say, oh he 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 always asking people. He asks. J. Anthony Brown, millionaire. Sheila Dixon, politician. Sheila Dixon, when she was the mayor, right? She came on my show. I got some clips. This was, this was um, way back, way back. Mm -hmm. You know, I had my show for 13 years, folks. So I was bringing people on my show for 13 years, man. So let me make a long story. Let's get to Sheila Dixon. You know, um, when she was going through her, her uh, trials and tribulations and stuff, I interviewed people. I interviewed her. She came on my show. The last and next, I interviewed her. I interviewed um, Kathy Pooh. interviewed Sheila Dixon. I even took pictures holding Sheila Dixon's sign up. You know, in the background, all that stuff. So, uh, by me interviewing her and getting her exposed and taking pictures and all that, and you know, a thousand dollars is really not going to hurt me asking for. Hey, can you invest in me, Sheila Dixon? Can you support Sheila Dixon? You not you never know what a person want to do if you don't ask. If you don't ask, you don't you didn't ask me. So people is not going to volunteer and give you a thousand dollars. I mean, some do, and they a lot does, 
But little old me, I don't think nobody just going to say, here's a thousand dollars, go get your van, I'm invested in you. So, which I haven't asked before, like an individual, hey, can you support me? I probably throw it on Facebook, and a lot of people probably say, hey, hey, you, I'm not on your page. So, I'm having my person to email everybody for this thousand dollars for this investment and not only that folks um you can get advertisement radio facebook live tv live um once i get the van you might want some rides hey larry pick me up take me here Bam. no problem you got that you invested in this you got that you probably so so it's not like it's not gonna be benefit. It's a fifteen passenger van. You know, people might say, Hey Lord, can you pick up my clients and bring them to my office? Come on, I got the fifteen passenger van. You good. See y'all don't see the vision. You don't see the vision. You don't see a need to to invest a thousand dollars into a vision that already been around. I ain't going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. So you can just say no. And I can just keep asking until I get it. Cause I'm gonna get it. I ain't gonna stop. I'm gonna get it. If I gotta say, hey, remember when I did this for you? I don't wanna do a tick for a tack. But if I had to, <laughs> you know, I be I mean I've been I've been sweating for different people for years, you know. And trust and believe, folks. I'm surprised by not having it when I first asked for it. Yeah. So let me tell you some more folks that I didn't help with the mic and interviewed and Got got my point across and all that. Um, it's so many people, man. Like Karen White. Remember Karen White, the singer? I didn't interview her twice on 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 the show, and didn't charge her dime. I mean, I guess big celebrities they uh, four some D's. Remember four some D's? I didn't interview them twice. Uh, four some D's. Karen White. Um, I even bought Shirley Murdoch a, uh, a Valentine candy, some hearts, some chocolate candy, but that was that wasn't for a tick for a tack or nothing like that. It's just that I appreciate Radio One let me do what I do when I was in the presence when they was around, cause by me washing the cars, bringing the newspaper, going to get their food, taking them places. I work for all that. I work for them pose, pictures, and all that. I sweat. 12 hours days. Sweat every day for three years. Volunteering, doing this. I was getting paid here and there, but yeah, I was happy. I was starstruck. You ever been starstruck? I was starstruck wearing suits and ties and tux washing cars. How crazy could I be? <laughs> I was a crazy man, wasn't I? Washing cars in a suit and tie. Because I never know who's coming to the radio station. I want to be picture ready, photo ready, you know? So, what's up, Kevin, man? My, my cousin, Kevin Rawlins. Yeah. Wendy Michelle Rice. What's happening? Um, God's giving hand. Mr. Crawling. I've been calling you all day yesterday, Mr. Crawling. You ain't been answering my phone calls. So, I had to give you a break on that phone. Uh, what else? Hold on here. James Henderson. What's up, man? Janae Johnson. What's up, Janae? So, anybody... If, did I forget anybody? Um, 
Let me name some more politicians. Um, oh, yeah. Um, my main apple strapper, Nick Mosby. That's my main apple strapper there. Nick Mosby, my main man, you know? When he was running for, he was running for what? Uh, what well, Nick Mosey was running for? Delicate Nick Mosey, always delicate. Um, he was running for the mayor, wasn't he? Mm, I think so. Yeah. And then he stepped down, you know. Um, who else? Uh, uh, Yolanda, y Yolanda Pulley. Before uh, all this, everybody jumped in the ring. I rode her around in the taxi and interviewed her. Bing. Yeah, Yolanda Pulley. Yeah, I was um, taking her around and, you know, so. Um, Ralph Johnson. And the rude them every time I see him. And the rude everybody every time I see him. Who else? I'm calling names today because it's, it's winding down. I still don't have that band. It's time for me to call names. Uh, who else? Who else out there? Names calling today. I'm dropping names. Yeah. Uh, who else, people? Mmm. And people call my show all the time. Yeah. Larry, whatever happened to the guy that used to wash cars down on the bottom of Spelman and Cherry Hill? Mm. Used to walk um, hunch over. Hunch over. Oh, I don't know. When you were talking about watching cars, it made me think about him. Yeah, oh my goodness, okay. Go ahead, Wendy. I'm going to give everybody something to think about when I get done. I might be on here another hour, so y'all go ahead and get your board and stuff. I'm trying to get my van. I'm calling names. Today is name calling. Yes, it is, too. Christine Flowers. She's, she's been... She stepped up to the plate, y'all. Christine Flowers, man. She give me anything I want. Mm, mm, mm. She always did. She she always did. And, and Christine Flowers, man, she give a person her last. I don't want to leave that out. Man, that's my best friend there. Christine Flowers ain't no joke. She give me anything I need. And I tell you what. If she had forty, the whole forty-five thousand, she 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 said, "Laura, here you go, man." I know, I know what I'm talking about. Christine Flowers don't even have it, and she would give me her last. She would give me her first, her last, her second, her third, and and, and the list goes on and on to the break of dawn. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yes, she will. So, uh, who else out there? But but uh, see, one time I name I, I named some name drivers of this millionaire, right? This millionaire did not like me calling her name. She did not like me calling her name. So I'm not even gonna mess with this millionaire no more. I'm not even gonna call this millionaire nothing. But before that millionaire became a millionaire, I interviewed that mean there. That mean there came on my show. I took pictures, photo ops with that mean there. This mean there was. I was the shit. Before this mean there became a mean there. I was the shit. And trust and believe. This mean there. When, when this mean there became a mean there. Shit. That mean this shit gave me a million. This this on the GP. This on the um what they call it, GP? What GP stand for? Huh? What GP stand for, y'all? But anyway. 
And what else? Uh, I got names of politicians. Jack Young, the mayor, Bernard Jack Young. He my main man. I got a picture. I took a picture not to, about maybe a year ago. And uh, with Bernard Jack Young, mayor Bernard Jack Young. I took a picture with him. I interviewed him a couple of times. He my main man. I ain't got no grumps and beef with him. You know, a lot of people, I like everybody in office. I like everybody in power in office because I'm proud of everybody. You know, so I always said this and I'm going to say it again. People in office, they holding it down. That's good. I mean, everybody not going to stay in office for their whole life. But while people in office, that's powerful. I give, I give, um, Congrats to everybody in office. Everybody holding it down in office, I, I love. I love everybody in office. Everybody in office, I love everybody because I'm in office right now. I'm holding it down just, just, just because of me. I'm in office. You know, I got the mic. I got the phone. I got the people. I'm the media. I have y'all. You know, if I can hold a people to look at me and listen and get news and information, that's that's good. See, I got twenty people on here now, early in the morning, six twenty five. I mean shit. That ain't easy. If y'all know my story, that's not easy. I was shy. You know, I used to be shy in school. I used to smoke a joint in the morning just to get my shyness out. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. I used to be a shy rascal. But now, I mean, I know police and lawyers and doctors and judges on here and everybody, but I used to, I used to smoke a joint. I used to be shy. Can y'all believe I used to be shy? Now, I come on the Facebook Live like it ain't nothing. Like, because... I always wanted to be an actor or a movie star or somebody, right? I mean, come on, man. The whole, sometimes I can have a thousand, two thousand, five thousand people, you know, come on. But um, if you're not funny or not learning or teaching, people click off. But I appreciate y'all. I appreciate everybody. I know I'm all over the place, but I used to be shy as shit. You know, but you know why I'm not shy no more? Because you only have one live, one life to live. You only got one life to live. You live the best. Live your best life. You never know who watching you, and you never know when is somebody going to say, I want to invest in you. I got a job for you. I'm still waiting for that day to come. Even though that, that day ain't come yet, but I'm still waiting for that day, man. And when that day come, I guarantee Everybody who stuck with me, who hung in there, I got something for you. If it's a if it's a turkey or a ham around Christmas, I'm gonna be able to give back. I do want to give back a turkey, a ham. I want to be like Cherie Rogers. She giving out turkey sandwich, food, and chicken, and all this stuff, man. You know, she's driving her Lexus, her Mercedes, her truck. She cashing that people and this, that, and the four. She videotaping people got the, she dancing in her dress and looking all cute and ponytail. She funny too. So I see you, Miss Roger. I'm talking about you. Mm -hmm. You got swag, girl. <laughs> you got swag. And if you got swag, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you like it, like I'm going to drop it like it's hot. You know, I'll be, I'll be watching your um, videos, and you good. You like me a little bit, you know. We not, we, we not, we not, we not shy of cameras. Uh, I, I know some people who shy of cameras and all that. But you go, girl. I'll be, I'll be watching probably like you be watching me. I don't know if you be watching me, but I'm just saying. I, you know, I'll be checking you out. I say, you know, you funny. You funny. So, um, that's cool. People like looking at people who, like, 
you know, smooth. Like, man, Yuringo, man, he is so bored. Man, Yuringo, he'll sit in the corner like this. Well, let me see if Man Yuringo on here, first of all. Because I don't want to talk about nobody if they're not on here. I'd rather talk, talk about you while you're here. But Man Yuringo, I'm trying to teach him some showmanship. I used to be a, I used to be, I used to be a lot of stuff too, folks. I used to be, I used to manage at three jazz groups, Urban Elements, um, Spring Forward, and uh, is it Corner Pockets? Yeah. So who all know me, guys? Back in the days, I used to manage at three jazz, jazz groups, three bands. We used to all play at, uh, city view. Mm -hmm. I used to wear the ties and the tucks and the suits, and um, I used to get gigs for people. You know, yeah, that's me. And everybody wanted me to manage their band and their group. It's something about me, and that was the first time I ever used to do stuff like that. But you gotta fake it until you make it. All you gotta do is put a suit and tie on, and go talk to these companies who. Who these um bars and hey I got this band I I need them to book here and bam 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 and you know City Room they don't pay much I'm gonna tell you who pays money Washington D.C. they pay money and Baltimore they don't pay that much money for for groups and bands so you know the percentage that I supposed to get a band my, you know. When they give me four hundred dollars to pay five or six people, band, you know, for how four hundred dollars gonna give six people money? So I used to just give them all the money. I didn't even used to take my cut out. I used to just give them all the money. People don't people don't treat people fair. So in Washington D.C., that's where you get top dollars at for groups and bands. So I'm just saying, yes, I me little old me. The guy who Dollar Time Celebrity Care managed three jazz bands at one time. Mm-hmm. I'm the man. I'm the man. But anyway, let me get back to Miss um Roger Sheree. So I was watching her video a couple of times, right? I thought she was a little old shy lady, right? She ain't shy a long ways. Uh, let me see if she on here. I know she got to go. Uh, Larry, that is so true. Ringo just um, sit and look like us, like we crazy. Look at us like, yeah, I know. Like, I keep trying to tell him he needs some, he got a bad song. Like when he's singing, Still on a bad day, I won't cry. Let me, hold up. Let me um, show y'all what he do. Let me, hold up. I don't know how I get on this topic, but I'm going to go ahead and, and perform real quick. Let me, um, let me, let me pull this up. Let me show y'all what Ringo did real quick. And he got talent. I mean, well, he don't have talent. He, he got a voice. Hold up. Hold up, let me let me get up here and sing real quick for y'all, real quick. Okay, this Hickle Ringo. Still on the band I won't cry. Still on the band I love God to the day I die. Still on the band day, I won't lose my faith. I won't lose my faith. And then he tried to, still on the band day, he knocked the enemies. Out of my way, way out of my way. When I fall, he pick me up. His love is, you know, he do that. So if I was singing that song, I'd do one of these numbers. Hold on, let me get ready. Hold on. Still on a bad day, I won't cry. Mm -hmm. Still on a bad day, you know, you know, get some rhythm in you. Still on a bad day. You know, don't steal on a bad day. I won't cry. You know, that's 
I mean, I'll be doing more than that, but Ringo, if you're listening, man, you got to have some showmanship because I managed three groups. You got to feel on a bad day. I won't cry. Then you go, and then you look somebody, and then pick them up out the crowd. Still on a bad day. And then bring them napkins and, and wipe their eyes. You know, you got to show them a shit. Work the crowd. Work the crowd, y'all. Work the crowd. You know, deal with the bad day. Um, you know, you got to work the crowd, man. Come on. I tell them that all the time. And then, when I'm, when I'm looking at Cherie, let me... Move this back down. And when I'm looking at Cherie, I pretty sell. I hope I don't get in no trouble. But you down, you smooth, you know. You got ribbon. <laughs> you do, and you funny. And people gonna look at you. And you're gonna sell your product if you sell something. Do you want a man then? Lord, please give me a boy so I can sing. I won't have to do the cash at dollar time celebrity care. My mouth, my voice will speak for itself. All right. Don't break the man back. Well, I mean, come on, Ringo. You got to do it, man. You got to show my shit. And then I say, man, you ain't down. He going to say, I'm down. I'm not up. And then I say, you don't have hip. You're not hip. I got hips. Those corny jokes he be trying to get. I said, man, you not hip. And then and then I said, um, man, you green. He said, I ain't green. I'm black. Man, you is so corny. I bet if I said you corny, I forgot to tell him he was corny. Whew. All right, just like Joe Jocks right here. I grew up with Joe Jocks, right? And that man, he is like, he black, right? But, you know, he he like white. He like, he black, but he like act white. You know how, now, I'm not prejudiced, I'm not racist, so y'all don't get it twisted. But black people is like hip, you know? But Joe Jocks, he wasn't hip at all. He like, he, he, he black, but he like white. Like, he not hip, he not down. And so, and, and a lot of white folks, y'all down. Y'all, y'all good. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't, don't try it. I love you. I love you. You know, I know we supposed to say Caucasian, but you know, y'all, y'all good. You know, I love white folks, so I'm not racist. So, but Joe, when we was little, Joe was like, he, he was like, wasn't hip at all. So, I be, I was trying to teach Joe how to be hip, right? And uh, Joe Jocks, he here, he know I'm talking to him. And um, I said, because I used to be a bad kid when I was little, right? I said, let's go hustle, let's go hustle. Hustle mean, like, go make some money, right? And... Uh, he went in the house and got dressed up like I was saying, let's go to the club and do the hustle. Remember that song that, let's do the hustle, dun, 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 dun. I wasn't saying nothing about no do the hustle. I said, let's go hustle, man. He gonna be. So Joe, in my line or what? So Joe wasn't down at all. He was like, he wasn't hip. But he's still not hip. He's still like, I guess he all right. He's a good kid now. He showed me an invoice that he made $71,000 last year. 71000 driving a Lyft, an Uber and Lyft. He trying to get me to drive a Lyft and get out the cab business. He, he showed me an invoice, $71,000. And I used to make 52000 when I used to drive a soda truck. Because I used to make 1000 a week because it's 52 weeks in a year. And uh, 71000 that's like 1500 a week. 
drive a lift. And the only reason I didn't drive a lift or Uber because I wanted to be, I wanted to have a TV show in a taxi. And that's really gonna break my heart if I don't do it because I really was living this long to have a television show in my taxi cab. Damn. I really wanted to do that. That that's really, really was my passion and my dream. That's the reason why I stayed being a cab driver this long. Because I was this close having a TV show in my taxi. I own the cab. I own a medallion now. And I needed a new cab. So now my vision is somewhere else now. I'm this close. Now, I want a band. A 15 passenger band. And I'm also going to get an SUV and be a news guy. Because when I do breaking news, I didn't even do breaking news yet this morning. I just came on as, will you support me getting a van? That's that's what I came on and said, will you support me getting a van? I didn't I didn't even say breaking news because somebody would say, where the breaking news at? Breaking news. So I don't want to give you the breaking news yet. But I will have some breaking news to y'all later on, for y'all later on. Because uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to talk to somebody and ask them about the BP gas station. The guy got killed. Mm -hmm. Did they catch anybody for that murder yet? Yeah, the BP gas station on Garrison in, in, in uh, Liberty Heights. So let me sit back here and see if y'all... Oh, oh God, I'm tired, man. The BP gas station on, on Liberty Heights in Garrison. Now, I went there yesterday. Oh, I'm Joe Jocks. Larry, you got too much time on your hands. Don't give up. And hold up. Where is your vision? I got you, Joe. You the man as far as working. You always work, but you are still not hip. You're not down. Down mean, but you, I guess you're too old now. And you always been green since you was little, but you still not down. You, you not, you not, it's too late to be down now. Just be yourself and Try don't be nobody else. Just be yourself. I'm Larry Wallace. I'm I'm myself. Uh Cherie Rogers, she yourself. Then Miss Cherie Rogers, have you always been like this when you was younger? And Charles Johnson, uh Joe, you hip to the cash, I heard. Yeah, he hip to the cash. He always had a job. He always worked. You know how to make that money, but I want to ask Miss Rogers something. Uh, where Miss Rogers at? Have you ever have you been like this all your life, or you know, like been funny and cool? Cause it seems like it's in you. You know, it's not like you pretend to be somebody you're not. So you, you know, you you down. You just like a down. You down. You, you cool, calm, and collective. You got it. Like Charles Johnson. Um, let me see how he is. Um, let me look at Charles Johnson. Charles Johnson probably was a guy that worked all the time. I guess, you know. So I, I haven't studied Charles Johnson, though. But Charles Johnson always in something. Let me see what he into. He said, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. Yeah. So, Charles Johnson is a person that's always messing with somebody. He probably was a bully or something. 
Yes, I was. Oh, you know what? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Stop. Wait a minute. I wanted to say that, but I didn't want to say that. And, and you knew that I wanted to say that. I wanted to ask you, was you a class clown? That is so nice of you. I love a person with human. Let me let me let me mess with you now. I got you now. Okay. Um, yes, I was a class clown. I did a little stand up comedy. Uh, now I just love to have fun. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. When I saw that video, when you had that um, that dress on. And you gave me a shout out too. I appreciate that. That was hilarious. I loved it. I loved it. And if nobody said they loved it, they loved it too. They loved that. And it shocked me because I didn't know. I, I, I mean, I thought you probably would have been like a quiet lady or, you know, but I can deal with that. I can deal with that. I really can. I really can deal with that. I bet you if we would ever uh, hang out and, and go to uh, anywhere, and um, I bet you we can, we can cut up now. I know how you cut up, so I guess we can really cut up. We can cut up. Now I know I got a cut up partner. I have a cut up partner. <laughs> That is so, that's cool though. And you probably know that I'm crazy too because I throw wigs on sometimes. Um, what else I do? Um, I speak my mind. I get serious. I don't take no junk off of people. Um, and I'm not scared of nobody. And I do know how to fight. But I don't like to fight because I might hurt somebody. Y'all heard me say that I might hurt somebody. I didn't say I might get hurt. I said I might hurt somebody. Because I don't like to fight. But if I had to, I would. So, I just don't want to. You know, folks, I'm the person I always fought fair. Um, you know, I never shot nobody before in my life. I never owned a gun. Um... For real, back in my days, I don't know how you, how old you are. Oh, you can too. Mm. <laughs> I never, I never um, owned a gun or killed nobody, nothing like that. I always fought head up. Like I know how to fight, so people don't know how to fight. And when people shoot people and kill people. That means they don't know how to fight. So, Marvin Medell, no hooks before books. I try to get people in them boxing rings all the time. You know? So, um, yeah, they are not fighting no more. They are shooting, I know. That's why they don't know how to fight. That's why they're shooting. We need some breaking news, Captain. I got you, man. You won't... You probably get breaking news from me around 8.30. It's probably going to be 8.30. But I just wanted to come on here because the reason why I came on here and talked to y'all, I was naming people that I want them to help me uh, with this $1,000. That's why I came on here this morning because I got a disturbed text. And this person texted me and said that they... Um, hold up. What Joe saying? You my boxing. Hey, Joe Jocks, repeat what you saying again. Joe, let me look at your last comments. I sent you the photo of... Oh, for real? The shooting BP gas says, when you sent me the photo? Oh, my goodness. Was you out there, Joe? Dang. I met the brother at at the gas station yesterday. 
I went up there and I recorded it and because this guy was putting some um he was putting some candles where his brother was killed at and uh I went over there I said I'm, I apologize man but I'm just putting it I, I asked I said can I record this he said yeah and I was recording but um I said who are you he said, that's my little brother, man. I said, I'm sorry to have him. You know. See, nobody can relate, really, unless it happens to them. See, my little brother was shot in the back in California and getting killed. And uh, so his brother was killed. He said, his, just his second brother was killed. Two years ago, his other brother was murdered. And now his brother murdered. He the oldest. And... I said, I don't know how you doing, how you holding up? He said, I got a hold up for my sister, my fiance, and then he got a little son, about two years old, I believe. That's crazy. So wow, you got there after me. I sent you the photos. Okay, Joe, I gotta see about the photos. Yeah, I was there yesterday, man. What you doing there, Joe Jocks? You not no news guy. So I can relate to people um, you know because I'm, I'm I'm street I'm street ghetto and when I interview people it might not I might not use the best words or the big words that they use and I don't cross my eyes you, you hear me say I don't cross my eyes that means you're supposed to dot your eyes and cross your T's. Y'all got to pick up when I say things. I say things to see if y'all catch it. I used to go with this girl. When I used to say everything wrong, she used to always correct me. It's not the way you say this. It's the way you say this. It's not you're supposed to say this. You're not supposed to say this. There's no such thing of, of uh, got this have. You know how people say got, got, and... Got is is a just take a got because it's spelled T O T, but uh, a lot of people like got got, and then when you say um um um, that don't really sound good when you're talking when you say um because that means you're thinking what you're gonna say next. I mean I can try to say things to help people out, but a lot of times people don't want to hear that you try to correct them all the time, even though it's nice to to tell people things and things or two. But you know, like whenever you hear people talk, I bet you will hear a lot of people say, um, um, um. But really, on the radio, you're really not supposed to say, um, um, um. Because I um mean, you're thinking you don't know what you're going to say next. So you always try to think. You remember how they say you're supposed to think before you say something? But sometimes it takes a lot of time to think. And on the radio, you got to keep talking, remember, 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 remember. Because you can't have a, a empty space. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and then you can't say you know what I mean because people don't know what you mean. I know what you mean. I don't know what you mean. What you mean? You follow me? So, you got to think before you say something. And then you ain't got time to think because you got to keep running on and on and on. So, you got to be a, a, a quick thinker. So, man, did you make your money? No, I did not make any money. I haven't been out yet. I suppose I picked up a ride, but he off on Mondays. But I got to go. I have to pick up somebody at 8.30. That's why I keep looking at the clock. And uh, it's almost 7. But anyway, folks, I really appreciate y'all. Now, Joe Jocks and Charles Johnson, them the two people that we have to keep in line. We have to keep them in line. But they good people. They good people. Everybody is beneficial for me. And all of y'all is something for me. Everybody on my page, just like um, Miss Rogers, um, I'm gonna have to ask her something right now in front of everybody. Are you still here, Miss Rogers? Here's, 
Here is something I'm going to have to put you under the gun right now. If I see a heart go up or a finger or something, that said that you hear my voice. So let's see if Miss Rogers here, but she, she probably gone because she got to go and she probably turned the channel. I got to catch her while I have her. Well, yeah, Miss Rogers. She gone that quick, Joe. Hey, you made her leave. Now I got to talk to Joe Jocks. Cause I was giving me ask Miss Rogers something. She gone. Darn it. I'll get it next time. But um Charles was the black eyes in the sky flying. See, you don't know what to say. That's why I really don't even like talking to you. Now you going oh Miss Rogers here. I'm glad. Good. Let me get Charles out of here. He he don't even know what to say. Was the black eye in the sky. Man, shoot. Let me talk to Miss Rogers. All right, all right, Miss Rogers. I'm back. Hold up. I'm a bad man. Jolly Roll. I tell you, Charles and Joe Jocks, I got my hand on a button every time for them two. But, Ch but Joe Jocks been acting good lately. With Charles, only reason I'm keeping him around because he looked out for me one time. So I ain't, so he cool, but he like, oh, goodness, I got to put up with somebody. All right, let me get back to um, Mr. Reed. Ask me. I will answer. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I need $1,000. To get this van from 45 people. So I need a letter from you to ask a hundred people for a thousand um, dollars. No, I need 45. Wait, hold up. I need 45 people to invest in $1,000. So I'm asking you, is it feasible enough that you would be the first $1,000 that I would receive to get this party started? Cherie Rogers, business lady. Now, how would I ask you this? It only can be two ways. You can say yes or no. And I'm not mad at you. And you don't have to give me no explanation. Just say yes or no. So that ain't the way to do it on live, is it? But I'm trying to get... Now, you just met me, so, you know, I'm, I'm asking people. I, I want to start asking all the people who are running for office, all the councilmen. I want to ask all the people who in office. I want to ask all the people who running for, for the mayor, all the people who in office. So basically, and all the um, the politicians. So basically, I'm just messing with you, should we, Raj? But if you already start typing and stuff, you can go ahead and answer. But I want to ask all the big wheelers um, that question because the investment is like get in the van, the 15 passenger, and, and do God work with it. Like, do what's needed to be done in the city of Baltimore. So I want to start asking all the folks I said. And then the little folks like us, if we want to contribute and help, that's cool. So it will come with this. You would get... 10 months of free advertisement. 10 months of free advertisement. And transportation as needed will be available. So that's not bad for $1,000 to invest. So I'm saying it on Facebook Live, but I'm also, I had already 25 letters was sent out yesterday 
to different people. And it's, it's only a yes or no. I know I have to ask at least um, 500 people to order to get 45 answers. So I am publicly asking you, Cherie Rogers, Miss Cherie Rogers, the, the lady with the, um, the lady with the, uh, what you call it, the brains and the skills and the showmanship. So, Larry, I got, he said, I got you, Larry. Um, Larry, sorry I wouldn't be the first. I love being the last. OMG. I am working on my end for you. What? Come on, Mr. No, hold up, hold up. Let me, let me, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my God! Now let me let me let me take a time. Let me take my time and read this to all the listeners out there. Y'all hear this, folks? I want y'all to read with me. Y'all ready, Larry? Hold up, hold up! I got you, Larry. I got you. I got this, Larry. Sorry. Uh oh, they go sorry. Sorry, it's hurting my heart. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, I wouldn't be the first. Okay, my heart is pounding. I love, ooh, oh, my heart is up now. I love being the last. Okay. I'm working on my end for you. Ooh, my heart is going up. Just be patient. Oh, okay, be patient. Be patient. Be patient. I'm not working due to COVID-19, but I am for your goal. You see how smooth that is, folks? My heart raised, my heart stopped, my heart pounding, and it's understanding. Y'all get that? Did y'all get this thrift? I got it, and I understand it, and I am so ease and so relaxed. You understand, folks? That's all you had to do is give me a good response like that. That's all. That's all. Now, she wasn't negative or anything. Oh, my goodness. It wasn't negative. Didn't say any bad things out the way. And look how smooth her mind is. That sharp, that quick, and that swift. Boy. So, minister, pastor, what, what, what can I call you? Because I know you are a what in front of your name. I like to give you the utmost respect. The reason why I don't say it because I don't know what to put in front of your name. That's why I say, Mr. B. Rogers. But can you correct me? Well, you like to be called. Bingo. That, that's all. But see, I really re, I really respect that. Isn't that nice, folks? And and Kevin, let me talk, let me tell you something. Kevin, you need to hear some real news. This is real news. This is real news, Kevin. This is real news. This is news. How to answer somebody. You just learn how to answer somebody. I have a secret waiting to explode. But I'm told, believe me, Larry, I got you. Woo! Come on, y'all. Man, some powerful stuff is ready to happen. <laughs> some powerful stuff. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Let me let me wind this up. Hold up. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. Let me sit 
sit back there. All I can say is hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. Man, what's for you is for you. What's for me is for me. Amen. So, there you go. Now, folks, thank you, Miss Cherie. Cherie. So, folks, y'all don't hear my story. Please read other comments. Oh, minister. Yeah, minister. Yeah, see that? A minister talking to me. And who talking to the minister? God. The minister is talking to me. And who talking to the minister? God. So. That's all I'm saying, folks. So I really, I know you got to go because you, that's why I had to call you and you was gone for a little while and you had to come back. But yep, I asked. You ask, you should receive, you seek, you should find, you knock, the door will open. So, there you go. All right. So, there you go, folks. Now y'all know how to address me if I ask you. Don't take an offense. Don't take a, get offended. And just, you know, she didn't say no. And she said, or she said, be patient. Mm -hmm. And that's her said, be patient. But the other folks, when I ask you, you don't have to say be patient. You can just act now if you can. If you can't, just say be patient like she said. I'm not going to get upset. Just be patient. And then some people, if you're not interested or they're helping, or if you don't see a cause or a need for me, just tell me no. Just flat out and say no. Like Joe would and like Charles would. They would just flat out and tell me no. So if I know somebody's going to tell me no, I'm not even going to ask them. Because they're going to flat out and tell me no. So, it'd be wasting my time to ask Joe or Charles. Because they're going to flat out and tell me no. But you'd be surprised, right? You'd be surprised. The one that you think not going to help you is the one that's going to help you. So, Joe, same question. Charles, same question. So... I ain't going to let y'all out the hook because everybody deserves a second chance. A third, fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and all that. All right, so everything I do, someone, what, back at me. I only can move when, hmm, surprise, I get the okay. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I just wanted to um, thank everybody for joining me. I want to thank everybody for listening and being aboard and being on. I kept 17 people. Wow. 18, 16. You know, the order, to order, I said the order, to order, to keep somebody's attention, you had to be really interesting and really good because you can't hold people. You cannot hold people on here, folks. You got to be active. You got to keep people on. It's like I kept Mr. Re Minister Cherie Rogers. Man, she had to leave a long time ago. You had to interact with people. You have to say their name. Say their name and keep them interesting. Say their name, Charles. Say their name. Say your name. Who else get ready to try to leave? Kevin, say your name. I know Kevin driving the truck. He wants some real news. You're going to get some real news, Kevin. You know, somebody's going to be arrested in Baltimore. You're going you gonna, to you gonna get the real news if that person already is not already apprehended. You're going to get some real news. So, you know... If you do the crime, you're going to do the time. If you think about killing, shooting, or whatever, 
You in Baltimore City, you're gonna get caught. Don't do it. So it's a deter that plane up. You're gonna get caught, folks. You, you, there's no ends up and buts. Um, just look at the news later on today. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see how long it took for the person to get caught what they did. That's the only thing I can tell you. I can't tell y'all nothing else. Mm -hmm. The name of the game is Don't Do It. Deter you from doing it. So, I ain't gonna say nothing. I've been telling people for two years, don't do it. But, folks, if y'all wanna learn how to fight, right? You shouldn't fight anyway. But, the beef, you can squash it. You can, I mean, because when you hurt somebody, you're hurting their family and everybody being hurt. And then when you incarcerated for life, um, your family going to have to support you. And, you know, so it's a, it's a lose-lose situation. It's not a win-win. You remember how people think, you know, it's a win-win. It's a lose-lose. Everybody's get lost. Everybody hurt. And social distance, people, social distance, wash your hands, put a mask on. I know you probably say, I'm not wearing no mask. I don't want to wear a mask. I want to hug people. I want to shake hands. But don't do it, folks. Do what you're supposed to do. Social distance. All right? I got to go, folks. But news will be out soon. Um, Joe's still here. <laughs> what Joe say? Take uh, take money to make money. Take money to make money. But Charles, you can't keep making money all the time. You gotta you gotta give too. Oh, that's right. You do give. You do give. So I can't I can't throw no punches at you, Charles, because you do give. So I can't. I I be trying to find everything wrong to say to you, but. I just can't do it because he's a good guy. He's a good guy. So I can't find nothing wrong. So he's a good guy. You just talk about people too much, man. You got to stop that. I think you're a bully. Stop being a bully. And if you see somebody on the streets, um, give a homeless person a sandwich. Buy a homeless person a cup of coffee or something. And uh, take a picture and send it to me and say, Larry, I just sold a seed into a homeless person. That's all. Just look out for the people less fortunate than us. And I'm going to end with that note. I love you. Thank you all so much. If you can support, support. If you can't, understand. Or just share this video because at the beginning of this video, this person texts me. And uh, this person said to me, nobody have it. It's Corona, COVID-19, nobody have no money. And I said, don't say what nobody have, say what you have. Don't say what nobody else going to do, say what you not going to do. You can't speak for other people. You only can speak for yourself. So when people say, um, people don't have this let's not talk for people we have to talk for us and me and you talk for the individual don't put people in there just say what you can't do and what you won't do alright so I'm going to end with that note I love y'all I see y'all in the AM I got to get out of here I have to be somewhere by 8.30 it's 7, 8. it's 7.12 Ain't got too much longer to go. Have a great day and see you on the other side.